Hey guys, it's Kyle the how to go 123 here and in today's video I'm going to be showing you guys how to do with Windows 10 with Ubuntu. So first thing you're going to want to do is hop down into the description below and I'll have a link to where you can download Ubuntu. You'll see two options, uh, Ubuntu 18.04.2 LTS and Ubuntu 19.04. Basically LTS means long term service, it just means you're going to get security updates uh, for longer, I think it's uh, April of 2023. So uh, you can download either one, it doesn't really matter. In this case, I'm just going to download the uh, long-term service version. And uh, when you go to download it, all you got to do is click the uh, big green download button and your download should start. So once your download has started, it might take some time to download depending on your internet speed. So I'll cut the video here and be right back uh, when it's done downloading. So once it has finished downloading, I just moved it to my desktop just so I can access it easier, but this is totally up to you. Next, you're going to want to head back into your browser and you're going to want to go to the second link in the description. And this is going to be a link for Rufus, which is a free program we're going to use to create our bootable USB. So you're just going to want to scroll down until it says download and you're going to want to download Rufus 3.5. It's uh, only one megabyte, so it shouldn't take too long to download. And once again, I put it on my desktop for easy access and I'd recommend you do the same. So now it's time for us to actually go ahead and plug in our USB. You can use any USB, it just needs to be at least two gigabytes in size. And once you've done that, for me, a window popped up with all the contents of the USB. Uh, but you're just going to want to go ahead and format it. So uh, I went to this PC and right click on your USB. Make sure it's the right one. Uh, and just right click on it and then go to format. Make sure you don't have any important files on this USB because it will be deleted. And if you do, just go ahead and back them up. And once the format is complete, just click OK and you can close out of this. So we can go ahead and open up Rufus to create our bootable USB. Under device, choose your USB stick. In my case, it was the H drive. Under boot selection, leave that default and just click the select button to select the Ubuntu ISO we downloaded earlier. Under partition scheme, this can be kind of tricky. It depends whether your computer uses a newer style UEFI BIOS or an older style legacy BIOS. If you have a newer style UEFI BIOS, you're going to want to choose GPT. But if you have an older style legacy BIOS, choose MBR. Pretty much any computer. Uh, made after 2011 uses UEFI, so you're going to want to choose GPT and leave the target system as default. Under format options, we can leave those all default and just go ahead and click start to start creating your USB. If this window pops up, choose write in ISO image mode and click OK and then click OK again. So creating your bootable USB might take some time, so I'll cut the video here and be right back when this is done. So now that Rufus has finished creating our bootable USB, we can go ahead and close out of it. And you can also close out of the other window that opened. Now, if you're doing this on another computer like I am, you're going to want to eject your USB stick. But if you're doing this on the same computer, you're just going to want to go ahead and restart your computer and boot into the BIOS. So now we just moved over to my laptop and this is where I'm going to be creating the dual boot. I didn't actually show it in the video, but this laptop is running the latest version of Windows 10. And I just went ahead and plugged in the USB and turned the laptop on. And while the computer was booting, I just used the F2 key to boot into the BIOS. Now, each computer is kind of different. I use a different key to get into the bus. Most commonly, it's usually F2. It could also be delete, escape. We're going to want to find that out for your specific computer. So once you boot into the bus, it's going to look something like this. Every computer has a different BIOS, so it should look similar to this. Essentially, what we have to do is make it so whenever we boot our computer, it boots to the USB rather than our hard drive. So in my case, all I have to do is use the arrow keys to move to the boot tab and use the F5 key to move the USB up so it's in the first boot position above the hard drive. So it's booting to our USB and not the hard drive. And when you're done that, you just got to go to the exit tab and exit and save changes. And once it does that, it's going to restart our computer, but this time it's going to boot to our USB. And then you'll see this grub menu here, and you're going to want to use the arrow keys and move down to install Ubuntu. Now you're going to want to wait about a minute or so for it to bring you to the Ubuntu installer. So 
once you've loaded into the Ubuntu installer, it's going to ask you to pick a language. So go ahead and do so and then hit continue. And then pick a keyboard layout. Now this part's optional, but you can choose to connect to Wi-Fi. I went ahead and did so. And once you've connected to Wi-Fi, go ahead and click on continue. Now check normal installation and you can choose to install third party software if you would like, but that's going to slow down the installation. So I'd recommend doing that once you've actually uh, installed Ubuntu. Then go ahead and click on continue. The next part takes about a minute to load, so give it some time. Alright, now this part's important for our dual boot. Make sure you check install Ubuntu alongside Windows Boot Manager. So that's gonna, gonna allow us to dual boot alongside Windows. If you choose erase disk and install Ubuntu, it's gonna erase all your files and you'll just have Ubuntu, it's gonna erase Windows. So once you have selected that, go ahead and click on continue. And this is where we're gonna allocate uh, space for Ubuntu and space for Windows. So use this slider there to determine how much space you want to give to Windows. So files represents Windows and then Ubuntu uh, so much space you're going to be giving to Ubuntu. So in this example, I gave 150 gigs to Ubuntu and uh, 295 gigs to uh, Windows. This is totally up to you. If you want to give more space to Ubuntu, that's good. That's totally fine. But if you want to give more space to Windows, uh, that's fine as well. And once you've decided how much space you want to give uh, to each operating system, go ahead and click on continue and give it a second to load. Uh, two pop-ups are going to come up and you pretty much just have to click continue on both. Alright, so go ahead and click on continue. And finally, once again, click on continue. And now it's going to ask you to make a local account for your computer. So first, you're just going to want to pick your time zone then click on continue. Then you're just going to want to put in your name and password and all that stuff. Uh, pretty straightforward. And once you've done that, go ahead and click on continue and the installation process is going to start. Now this usually takes about, well for me this took about 15-20 minutes, but this depends on, you know, uh, the speed of your computer. So let this do its thing and uh, I'll be back once this is done installing. So now that the installation has completed, go ahead and click on restart now. And uh, just before your computer is about to boot up, uh, you're going to want to head back into the BIOS. And in the BIOS, you just want to go back to the boot tab and pretty much reverse what we did earlier. You want to make sure that your hard drive is at the top of the boot priority and that the USB is second because now we want to boot to our hard drive. We no longer want to boot to our USB. And then just go back to exit and save. And now your computer is going to boot to the hard drive and you'll see this menu here and this is will boot up every time you boot up your computer you'll see this menu and this is where you're going to pick which operating system you want to use so whether you want to use ubuntu or windows uh we're just going to pick ubuntu here just to make sure that uh everything was installed correctly and we'll just boot up into our new uh, ubuntu installation Alright, so we are now in Ubuntu and it looks like the installation was successful. At this point, we can actually go ahead and eject our USB. So just right click on your USB stick and then click on eject. And then you can remove your USB from your computer. So the final thing we're going to want to do is to try and boot into Windows. So go to the top right hand corner of your screen and then click on the power button to restart your computer and uh, let your computer restart. And once your computer has restarted, once you're back at the grub menu, pick Windows Boot Manager to boot into Windows. And now your computer should boot into Windows 10. And there we go, we have successfully dual booted Ubuntu with Windows 10. So that's pretty much it for the video. If this helped, leave a like. If it didn't, leave a dislike. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comment section below, and I'll try my best to help you guys out.
I also have a Discord server, which I'll also leave the link for in the description below. And if you need some extra help, uh, you can get in touch with me there. So that's it. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.